Welcome to another Q&A session. Today's uh, Q&A is about moisture in the concrete and more specifically rising dampness in the concrete. I had a question from someone who posted this on, um, on the blog, on the learncodings.com blog. And it says, I want to apply epoxy on concrete, but it's in a swampy environment. So it's a building that's, there's a swamp all around it. It's like a marsh. And last time he did this, he got debonding issues. So he's wondering, how can I apply the epoxy and not have to deal with the, the rising dampness and the moisture? Is there any way to deal with this? And before I respond, I'll just say, warning, warning. Epoxy is sensitive to moisture and to the hydrostatic pressure. So it's not just the moisture that it's sensitive to, but all the pressure rising from the bottom of the, of the concrete upwards, it pushes the epoxy up. Very important that you understand this thing. And here's an example of what happens when you have moisture underneath the epoxy. It just delaminates. The water got underneath, it delaminates, it debonds the concrete from the, um, from the coating. So these are the possible solutions. None of these solutions are perfect. They all have their for and against. And really, it's about being able to assess the situation and understanding what's best for you. And a disclaimer before I move on, don't believe everything sales reps are trying to sell you. Sales reps, their job is to sell, and sometimes they don't know that they don't know what they're talking about, or they're just told try to sell this project, this product, because we've got too much stock and we have to sell it. So they're not necessarily looking out for your best interests. Ultimately, you're in charge of the project, whether you're the applicator or the owner of the building. You need to make a decision based on what's best for you do not necessarily trust that the sales rep will give you the best possible solution. Now, number one, the best thing to do, of course, is to deal with the foundations. Here is an example of a foundation that's already uh, flooded. Obviously here, what I'm saying is, if you can, before you actually have to deal with the concrete and the floor, deal with this problem, deal with the waterproofing around the foundations so you don't have to deal with the swamp later. Now, I understand that most of you watching this video probably show up later on site several months or years after the floor was, uh, the, the building was built and you have to deal with a situation where it's no longer possible to deal with the foundations. But what I'm saying is, first and most important, make sure that you've figured out the protective foundations from getting moisture and water getting into the building rather than having to deal with it afterwards. The second choice is to use a moisture blocking primer. These are epoxy based usually. Here is an example of my product. I'm not doing this to sell, although you can check it out. I'm going to post a link below. This is a solution. It's not the only solution. And I want to emphasize something with epoxy based water primers. Yes, they can hold the moisture back. But if there's too much moisture, if there's too much pressure, they are still not enough to stop the problem, to, f to fix the problem. I'm just making that clear because some people assume I have this magic product that will solve all your problems. That is not the case. Moisture blocking primers that like this product are a good solution, but it's not the only solution and it's not the, necessarily the ideal solution. Three, this is a continuation of number two. Use water-based epoxy. So I'm not just talking about the primer now. I'm actually talking about the actual coating. So the reason why I'm recommending water-based epoxy, and here is a picture of a water-based epoxy, is that water-based epoxy has the advantage that it's breathable. So what happens is when the water vapor, as in this picture, the, 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 the water vapor tries to come out of the concrete, out into the surface, if you use a conventional solvent-based epoxy, they do not breathe, so they will kind of, the, the, the vapor will push the product up and you'll get cracks and delamination. Water-based epoxy is breathable, so in that sense, it will probably behave better with moisture, with moisture in the, in the with, with moisture in the, in the concrete. Again, it's not the best solution. It does have other drawbacks. Water-based epoxy in general is not as good, in my opinion, as solvent-based epoxy, but Keep this in mind, this is also a solution. So if the customer is maybe not that interested into mechanical strength of the floor, then maybe water-based epoxy could be a solution for him. Number four, you can use capillary action products to block rising dampness. Now what these are, these are products that penetrate the concrete. These are not like primers that you put on top. You kind of drill holes into the concrete and these kind of go into the pores 
and I'll show you here what I mean that the water just the, the, this the chemical goes into the pores and blocks all the all the capillaries that way the moisture cannot rise to the surface it's kind of blocked this is also a solution again this solution has its drawbacks here's a product I use this one is not necessarily for concrete but for other types of surfaces um, but the main problem here is you need to make sure that after you've applied this product that it will be compatible with whatever you are going to apply afterwards so you can chemically treat a concrete with a special product but the question is will the epoxy that you apply afterwards be compatible with this that is something you need to test to make sure it's going to be fine otherwise you could be you could run into problems and number five which is kind of uh, not really a solution but it's uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you but sometimes you may just not want to do the project I mean if you're seeing too many problems if you've if you're testing out solutions and you're seeing that the moisture keeps on coming back that nothing seems to be working properly that the floor just has too many problems this is a solution too. don't do the project I mean I know you're gonna disappoint your customer I know you're after work but sometimes if it's just the things don't fit in well just avoid the project because you're gonna get yourself into trouble I get emails a lot of emails from people saying I applied an epoxy and two months later the whole thing is falling apart and the customer wants me to do it again and what do I do and how am I gonna pay for this and how do I know it's not gonna happen again so this is this is a reality don't do the project if it's not in your best interest so that was my Q&A today if you enjoyed this presentation please take a moment like share the video leave a comment leave your questions and um, I'm trying to make more videos with Q&A so just leave your questions below uh, this helps me spread the word and don't forget before I tune out these are our websites the first one www.tcs.eu is on our company on our products and learncodings.com where you can get our learning articles on epoxy flooring you can learn all about the online course I'm gonna post the link to the course below so you can click on it now and uh, learn all about our online course thank you very much for watching and uh, I hope to hear from you soon again and if you haven't subscribed, remember, subscribe to our channel so you get notified when we bring out new videos.